Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course, Industrial Biotechnology. Uh, today, I shall continue my lecture on, we concentrate on solid liquid separation process. And we have basically that uh, these processes are common to most of the chemical and biochemical industries. And, uh, and as per, uh, and then it has different names. As for example, that uh, I work with citric acid industry. And uh, during uh, after the citric acid production, we have so many uh, different solid liquid separation process. As for example, initially we use the rotary vacuum filter to separate the uh, mycelia or in the cell mass that is present in the fermentation broth. After that, we precipitate this citric acid in the form of calcium citrate. And this calcium citrate we separated in a special type, another filter, what we call Panavis filter. And after that, this calcium citrate we hydrolyze with concentrated H2SO4 and it produces citric, uh, citric acid and calcium sulfate, and which is called gypsum. And this is again passed through the another filter, uh, what you call gypsum filter. After that, uh, we pass this uh, 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 the citric acid solution through the evaporator to concentrate the citric acid uh, 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 concentration to increase the citric acid concentration from 22 percent to 60 percent. And then we pass it through the crystallizer where solid crystals of citric acid is separated from the liquid. And then again it passes through the centrifuge to separate the solid crystals from the liquid. So, we can we can see that low, lot of separate solid liquid separation process are there. And basically in the last class I discussed about rotary vacuum filter and also we I, I discussed about the about the plate and frame filter press. Now the the whenever we use uh, <coughs> the any kind of filtration process that again it depends on the size of the uh, particle that we are going to separate. As for example, uh, the filtration process that is used for the bacteria may not be suitable, may not be used uh, for the yeast cells. Actually Baker's yeast fermentation process we use the uh, plate and fan filter press and for fun fungal cell mycelial separation we use the rotary vacuum filter. So, so, this way I discussed in the last class. Now, today another solid liquid separation process is left that is centrifugation that I shall talk about and then also I shall, I shall discuss about other downstream processing that we have. Now, let me first discuss about the centrifugal filter. It consists of a stainless steel perforated basket typically 1 to 2 meter in diameter lined with filter cloth. Basically, we take the material inside the uh, inside the centrifuge and we rotate at the high speed the solid material they throw to the surface where your filter cloth is there. So, it is accumulated on the surface I shall show you and then liquid will come out because this uh, this is perforated. So, liquid will go out of the system. The basket is rotated at a speed of uh, 25 per second high speed tending to stress the basket excessively. The product enters centrally and through outwards by centrifugal ports and held against the filter cloth. The filtrate is forced trough of cloth and remove the liquid outlet, the solid material is retained in the cloth. Let me show you this. This is this is actually the centrifuge where you take the your your semi that uh, that material and we when we when we rotate it very high speed here 
then this is the perforated basket sir and this is this is embedded with the filter cloth. So, when the solid material is striked to the surface and liquid will comes out through this uh, through this perforated baskets and liquid will going out and then uh, when it is accumulated and take the material out and, and make the take the filter cloth out and separate the uh, separate the solid material. So, <coughs> it can be uh, used in preparation of aspirin because in the pharmaceutical industry we have aspirin and for the removal of precipitated protein from insulin. As, the, as you know the insulin is kind of uh, recombinant protein we usually produce through the fermentation process and can also handle the concentrated slurry which might block the other filters. Now, the different type of filtration techniques we have depending on the size of the filter as I mentioned that we have filtration that is usually size varies from 1 to 100 microns then micro filter this again take care the smaller particles the ultra filtration again is much smaller particle reverse osmosis will be uh, little bit more smaller particle and electrodialysis is more smaller particles. So, this is ionic spatic this macromolecules and this is particulates. Now, it is picturally it can be explained like this suppose your mixture is comprised of different type of particles is a micro is the, the, the membrane filter then ultra filtration nano filter then reverse osmosis you can see how the particle smaller particle becoming separated from the, 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 the mixture. Now, let me discuss about another another downstream processing that is largely used by the industry one is called evaporation. Evaporation is nothing but concentration is solution containing non volatile solute by boiling heavy the solvent. Just now I talking about citric acid um, concentrate uh, concentration of the citric acid mixture from 22 percent to 60 percent. Now, the question comes how you how you do in the industry. The what we have we have tubular tubular heat exchanger this is called tubular heat exchanger suppose we pass uh, our uh, that you know citric acid solution here citric acid solution and here we pass the steam let us assume this is the steam annular space we have the steam this is steam. So, when we pass together what will happen this citric acid solution will be heated and then what do you what do you have we, we throw it in case in the in the in the some kind of big chambers here throw it like this and here when you throw this liquid here then what will happen that you know that vapor will go out like this and concentrate material liquid the concentration concentrated liquid will comes cons, concentrated solution of citric acid will comes out from the bottom. So, this is how the evaporation is required that is why I, I told you this is concentrating a solution containing non volatile solute because we, we, we should know we know that two type of solutes are there one is called volatile and that is non volatile non volatile solute means that if you if you if you keep the uh, suppose uh, I make I can give a very simple example uh, we have uh, non volatile fatty acid we have volatile fatty acid. Now, in case of uh, volatile fatty acid like uh, like acetic acid uh, by butyric acid and all this thing if you keep it in a beaker 
after some time you will find the everything will be evaporated out. So, so that is why that is nothing will remain in the beaker. So, all are we call it volatile uh, fatty acid. Now, non volatile fatty acid means what if you keep the as for example, if you keep the citric acid in the solution, then citric acid is the non volatile fatty acid. So, what will happen? The water will be evaporated out, evaporated out, and after some times the solid crystals of citric acid will remain in the beaker. So, this is how we, we differentiate the non volatile solid from the volatile solid. So, this is the evaporation basically used for concentrating the non volatile solid by boiling away the solvent and removal the part of solvent from the solution of the non volatile solid by the vaporization. Examples are production of orange juice concentrate, production of concentrated uh, sulfuric acid and citric acid industry. Now, evaporation can be used for the different purpose. One is uh, uh, the, the distillation involved two or more volatile components there we can use that and then drying process where product uh, is solid in evaporation product usually more concentrated in the liquid form and crystallization product in slurry crystals precipitated from the solution. So, evaporator <coughs> evaporator used in the process industry different type of evaporator the velocity of circulation slowly through the tube should be reasonably high to attain the high heat transfer rate circulation can be classified as natural circulation due to the density gradient and spore circulation applying the external mechanical means like pumps. So, type of evaporators we have different we have, uh, have uh, that uh, the tubular evaporator maybe long, long tube vertical evaporator where upward flowed and flow and downward flow and there is force circulation. Another evaporator we call it agitated uh, flame evaporator. Now, falling fill evaporator, rising flame evaporator or upward flow evaporator can be used as a falling flame evaporator uh, while the direction of the feet will, uh, will be reversed because it is flowing up and you know that it, the, the concentrated liquid will go down the concentration of highly heat sensitive materials such as orange juice requires a minimum time to expose to the heat surface. This can be done falling flame evaporator. Then we have force circulation evaporator. This is used for high viscous liquid and liquid containing the suspended particles. We have agitated uh, fix which is a flame evaporator modified flame <coughs> falling flame evaporator with single jacketed tubes containing a internal agitator. Application is that if the liquid is viscous, is viscosity is very high, then this can be used. High capital cost and high maintenance cost is required in this. Now, crystallization, this is all about the evaporator. Now, I, I told you that uh, the crystallization is, uh, is the process of formation of solid crystal precipitating from a solution. Uh, crystals is also a chemical solid liquid separation technique in which the mass transfer of the solute from the liquid solution to a pu pure solid. Importance of crystallization is the purification of drug, improvement of improve bioactive bioavailability of drug choose the most stable form and a crystalline powder is easily handled stable and possesses good flow uh, properties and attractive appearance so you know that uh, this is the uh, crystallization so there are different examples we have in the crystallization process uh, i can give a typical example of uh, this uh, sugars uh, uh, production and the sugar production is usually in can be done in two different uh, sources one is cane cane um, from the cane and beet uh, so beet is largely used in the western country and cane is used mostly the country like india and brazil now how how we separate the uh, separate this uh, uh, this uh, sugar from the uh, that uh, can 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 juice uh, 
cane juice is usually concentrated through the process of evaporation. After that, we reduce the temperature. So, the crystals of sugar formation take place and then with the help of centrifuge, we separate the crystals of sugar from the liquid and liquid we call it cane molasses and sugar crystals we wash with water and dry it and sell it in the market. So, one is largely used in the, the production of sugar, then we have uh, purification of drug it is largely used then improvement of uh, improved bioavailability, bioavailability, citric acid production I just discuss, uh, discuss that and preparation of organic and inorganic active pharmaceutical ingredients. Different in the pharmaceutical industry it is uh, new spring as per example is largely used. Now, theory of crystallization is very interesting how, how the crystal formation take place. The first we shall have to make the super saturation because if it is uh, it is under saturation that crystallization will not take place. If it is super saturation then and only then crystallization will take place. It can be done in three ways uh, uh, heating the solution, cooling the solution and salting out. The first we heating the solution what is the purpose of heating? Heating just concentrate the liquid and then cooling it and uh, because I can give that is simple example I was talking about citric acid fermented citric acid uh, separation process and citric acid has a trans transient temperature at 26.6 degree centigrade sorry 36.6 degree centigrade is the it a transient temperature. The what does it mean that at the at above 36.6 degree centigrade it is citric acid is available in two different forms. One is called citric acid monomer and another is citric acid anhydrous. So, um, what happens that uh, uh, if, the, if the temperature is more than 36.6 degree centigrade we get citric acid anhydrous and in, in case of citric in if the temperature we keep less than um, 36.6 degree centigrade uh, we get CAM. So, usually at low temperature crystallization more crystallization crystal formation take place. So, what we prefer we should we prefer that to produce more crystal that is why we, we usually initial crystallization we take place with the help of at low temperature so that we can produce the CAM and later on CAM we can convert it to uh, citric acid anhydrous through if by keeping the temperature of the mother liquor which containing about 30 percent of citric acid at 40 degree centigrade. So, this is uh, this is how we can do that. So, <coughs> this is separation of the crystals we can say it is a salting out then then uh, then how the crystal formation take place this is very interesting the atoms of molecules or ion come closer to one another and form aggregate or cluster so atoms they coming to each other and form the cluster and these clusters will combine to form embryo and, and in this stage only the latex formation begins and these embryos combines to form nuclei. This nuclei crystal form nuclei crystals are formed. So, these are the different steps involved in case of crystallization process. First, we have segregated molecules, they, they slowly, slowly they come closer and they form the cluster. From the cluster, they form the embryo. From the embryo, they form the nuclei and the, from the nuclei, it produces the crystals. And uh, once the crystal growth has formed, the nuclei formation stops and crystal growth begin. So, one crystal it, it, can be, it may be bigger crystal, it may be smaller crystals depending uh, on the nature of the crystal that uh, characteristics of the solute that we have in the, in the solution. Now, the picturally that uh, process can be explained like this, this is like this, this is the solution. You can see when we evaporate the solvent, then it, uh, then we cooling the solute solution, this then particle, this is we form the super saturated solution, we cool down, then particle formation take place. That is, you know, that molecules, the addition of crystals or breaking this crystal is from the cluster of crystals. You can see the crystal 
cells they will be and uh, attaching with each other after that the embryo formation is there you can see this some kind of embryo formation after that the nuclei formation is the taking place uh, this nuclei from that we can get the crystals crystals of different shape and size that we have we we produce we can have the different size of crystals this is how the crystallization take place now okay, different uh, type of crystallization equipment that is in practice one is drop tube uh, baffle crystallizer force circulation evaporative crystallizer circulating liquid uh, crystallizer and tank crystallizer there are different type of crystallizer th that is available in the industries now drop uh, tube crystallizer used in application requiring the narrow crystal distribution and and large average crystal size because i uh, i sell i sell because i work with citric acid industry and i i i i work with uh, uh, the crystals like tank crystallizer i said i said i said tell little bit details on that and the information of this crystallization process already available in the internet the if anybody interested they can see the details of this process force circulation or evaporated crystallizer is uh, is used generally simple crystallization operation where the large crystal size is not required as for then we have force circulation evaporative crystallizer uh, then we have circulating liquid crystallizer circulating liquid crystallizer are used for large scale uh, production of a wide range of crystal uh, product and like gypsum and inorganic salt and silver salts silver nitrate this is largely is used now uh, this is the tank crystallizer that we uh, that we use in the industry and let me explain this process it is uh, it is very simple that uh, we have the crystallizer that uh, we have simple it is a tank and we have agitator and this agitator is, uh, is the special type of agitator because we call it anchor because there are different type of agitator that we have but here we use the agitator which has very uh, low shear forces because you know if the because you can, I, I you can remember i i explain then in the fermentation industry we use the impeller impeller is like this which has high shear forces now if you use this high shear forces then what will happen that uh, that crystal formation will be affected but if you in the, in the if you because if you have high shear force the crystal formation will be inhibited but if you have low shear forces then the crystal formation will not be inhibited so we use the this kind of crystal we reduce the temperature after concentrating this uh, that that you know i told you that 22% 22% citric acid uh, concentration we we redu increase the concentration to um, uh, to 60% and then we put this here 60% this we put it here in this uh, the, 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 and we reduce the temperature maybe we reduce the temperature about 10 to 15 degrees centigrade and then this is insulated because the outside is insulated so the heat loss should be as minimum as possible so it is a heat loss that is that is totally insulation outside so uh, we we put it and we move this turret and and what will happen with respect to time then uh, then there will be kind of crystal formation that will take place inside this and then when the crystal formation uh, maximum crystal formation is take it uh, taken place then we take the material out and we pass it through the uh, centrifugation process and through the centrifugation process we can we can we, we can separate that uh, separate the crystals from the liquid and the liquid we consider as the mother liquid because after centrifugation whatever liquid that uh, remain that is called mother liquid mother liquor and this mother liquor also contain about 30% of citric acid 
So, this can be used uh, for the production of citric acid anhydrous. I told you we uh, that uh, transition temperature of citric acid is about 36.6 degree centigrade. Now, what we do? We take this in a vessel and we increase the temperature uh, temperature of this vessel to about 40 degree centigrade and then we put uh, this is the mother liquor we have this is the mother liquor uh, we put it here and which contain about 30 percent of citric acid then we put it cam here cam we put and this is the hesitator we have we put a hesitator here and with the when we put the hesitator then uh, then then what will happen the water that present in the citric acid crystals that will go in the, into the solution so uh, this is the this is the this is the things that you have then then when 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 total that you know uh, uh, solute solu that you know that the water molecule present in the cam when it go to the soluble form then we take the material out and centrifuge we get the citric acid anhydrous which largely used in the pharmaceutical industries so um, so uh, uh, in this uh, today's presentation i try to discuss uh, three things uh, one is uh, centrifugation how the through the centrifugation I, how we can separate the solid from the liquid then I, I talk about the evaporation techniques the different type of evaporation technique is uh, used I work with citric acid industry we I told you there we use the uh, tubular heat exchanger just to heat the liquid we and and then we, we throw it in a vessel where uh, the vapor is go, goes up and and the concentrated liquid will go down and this concentrated liquid we cool down and take it in the crystallization process crystallization is a separation process i explain how the crystal formation take place is it take place in is after the different stages of operation the, the and uh, i think next uh, next presentation i shall uh, talk about other downstream processing that is used in the biochemical industries thank you